Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. I'm going to let that one turn round and do a little tiny bit. No, I'm not actually. I'm just going to stop that one. That one can stop there a second and we'll put the spout out and I will bring it to here like this. And then I will go and get this tractor. And I will run down across the field here. So that combine there is going to turn around. He'll do a run all the way up. And then there'll be a little tiny bit more that it can do to finish off the top end of the field up there. And we'll have to manually run it back down to do another little tail end down there. This one, once we've unloaded, we'll be able to start going around the field at the top of the hill. And getting that one underway. I'm going to dump all of the grain into this. You know what? I'm not going to. I am going to go back to here and I'm going to fill up this trailer completely. And once I've filled up that trailer completely, then we will put the rest into the other one. Should fill it up. There we go. Right. And then back up a little bit and take the rest off into that one. How are you doing over here? You. I tell you what, actually, let's stop a second. Save me having to run all the way back up across the field. No, it's not a huge distance but it's still some distance if I just go over there here like this and set you going like that you'll do that little tiny triangle right there and then I can run you back over and you can go and just like tidy that bit up that that'll be faster than having to run you right the way up across the field there so um, I'll spin you around myself because I can do this faster than the hired help can do it and Lower that down into there and cut that piece. Then we go running off up here and set the hired help and just let it go and do this strip up through here. This won't take very long. Get to there. Hired help. Away you go. Right, you can now finish that. You're done with your unloading here. So we're going to go and race up to the top of the field now. I'm going to get you straight into the next field while we're traveling up. I'm just going to very quickly click on that twice and that one as well so that you're facing in the right direction. And then you're going to start working round and round the outside of the field up here. And again, we'll do four times around the outside of the field the same as we did with the other one. You've got a nearly full grain tank. You should be able to get everything else into your grain tank down there, though, without any trouble. So I'm hoping you can. It'll be a bit poor. If it, well, I say it's a bit poor. It's not really a bit poor. It just means that we are getting a fantastic yield off of these fields, which is actually a really good thing. Because there's no harm with having lots and lots of yield coming off of our fields. Right, you're done there. This one, you're not actually finished. There is a little tiny bit more that you can do. But I'm feeling, you know, forgiving today. So I'm not going to fire you on the spot for that stu act of stupidity right there. It's late in the day. I think it was quarter to seven. You, you, you're possibly one of those early bird types that can't cope with... Um, late evenings because that you know, have you ever noticed that people who get up early are generally thought of as superior beings like you you get it's, it's always been praised about someone who gets up early um now i've gone you know sometimes i get up early and i can function quite well getting up early uh generally i usually sort of um lean towards getting up later in the day um but the people who function, who get up early and really get going, oh yeah, because you can get most of your work done before lunch, that's great and all, but most of you, most of you who are crowing about how you get up early and the early bird gets the worm and other such nonsense like that, uh, you're usually falling asleep by half past three in the afternoon, yeah? So as we get towards tea time, you're genuinely struggling. I've seen it all before. I've seen how wonderful you are with your getting up early and your early bird and your catching that worm. You are usually falling asleep by tea time. Yeah, you cannot cope past that. It's too much for you. You're then wanting to rush off to bed. 
Whereas the person who's considered to be more of a night owl, for some strange reason, considering that the population is actually split roughly 50-50, it seems really strange and bizarre to me that society in general looks down its nose at the night owl, the person that doesn't start off, that struggles early in the morning, that can't get going early in the morning. They really genuinely struggle with that bit, oftentimes because they've not long gone to bed. Um, but those people are night owls. Those people, they function, their body clock functions, their mind functions better with a later start. They may not get themselves out of bed until 9 or 10 o'clock. By lunchtime, they're just thinking about getting started, whereas that early bird has already done the majority of their day's work. And the early bird is uh, looking all smug, but... Something stops the work from happening in the morning. And, you know, then the work has got to happen later in the day. And you just got to sort of chill out, rest and relax a bit in the morning because there's nothing else to do. That early bird cannot cope with working late into the night. Or they, they struggle. They struggle a lot more. Whereas the night owl, they function best in the evening. And this is like a, this is a body clock thing. It's a, it's a natural thing, and it is about 50-50 on the population. The early bird they generally work best. Their mind is at its most active, and they work best. Uh, sometime you, you're looking at between about 10 o'clock in the morning and about two o'clock in the afternoon. That's the period where they function best. The night owl, the ones that tend towards getting up later, tend towards staying in bed until ridiculous o'clock. Uh, before they finally drag themselves out and are looked at as lazy by the rest of society, they tend to function best from around 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening until 10, 11 o'clock at night. Um, so roughly the same amount of hours that the early bird does, just at a much later period. But it's it's never recognized, it's never accepted as a good thing, despite the fact that 50% of the population does actually function like this. Now, I can function at both. Some people like me are able to, so long as you, 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 you can adjust your sleeping patterns to fit, uh, some can function well on either. You, what you will typically find, though, is at different stages in your life, you do tend towards one or the other. Um, so when you're very young, you tend towards the early bird phase. Uh, teenagers through until mid-twenties, you tend towards the night owl phase. Mid-twenties through to, um, well, this is where it changes, uh, individually, right? You, you could stay on a night owl phase then up until you retire, Typically, though, people who are retired do tend to favour the early bird approach and they find that their um, natural bodily rhythms put them into the early bird approach rather than uh, working on a night owl bit. But that's not always the case. Um, I know people who are long retired who still function best on a working in the evening situation um, and struggle to sort of wake themselves up and get going during the middle of the day. So it, everybody is different. Every single situation and person is different. There's no right or wrong. But it's just something that really confuses me sometimes is the... And it's, it's, it's not all people, but there are some who seem to get quite passionately heated and speak with some intense dislike and a, a, about anybody that doesn't get up really, really stupid early o'clock and function really well during the day. Um, and I, I, although, you know, I think that's the, the same with uh, everything in life, though, isn't it? There's always going to be someone that dislikes anything that is different from themselves. Um, it's just this one seems so bizarre. Why do you... I, I think, really, the, the, the question for me is, why? Why would someone... What, why did some people get so angry and upset at the idea of another person 
staying in bed later than what they generally do, but then working later than what they generally do. Some people get really upset about this. They really do. I've, I've had this response. Like, I, I generally wake up between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning. So, most people, who, well, if, if I say most people, anyone that does an office job or anyone that goes to school, you've all started school and your office jobs long before I get out of bed. But I start work and then I work until midnight. And most of you have gone to sleep long before I finish work. So, yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it balances out. We still end up doing the same, but it's amazing how many people get genuinely angry at the thought of me working from home and not getting out of bed until 10 o'clock because that's just being lazy that is just disgusting and lazy and appalling and it like uh, I, i've genuinely had some like the hatred uh, the pe people go red in the face with anger and rage at the idea that someone is doing this well you're that's that's just tell you should be ashamed of yourself well no not really i'm i'm not in the least bit ashamed of myself you know uh i i have usually start like 10 o'clock is a little bit late I, I i normally like to get out of bed by about half past nine i i, I don't want to be too late there um but yeah i, I i'll uh I drag myself out of bed as and when you know if it's 10 o'clock it's 10 o'clock so be it and then i will start work i make myself a cup of coffee and I'll wash my face and um, then I, I can get to work and I start work so I've usually sat down and started work by half past ten and then I work continuously until midnight I take a short break at tea time for about half an hour while I watch a YouTube video or something like that and even then I'm still doing some work in the background while I eat my tea and then I keep going, and there's there's no uh, no breaks, no stopping. I'm, I I work continuously from when I wake up until I go to bed at around midnight. So, quite why this causes this is such a rage-inducing fact, I I I I've never really quite been able to fathom because the person you know I, I have I've tried questioning some of these people who get quite outraged by this, and I've I've never had a coherent answer. So if anybody can fill me in, if, if the idea of me staying in bed until 10 o'clock each morning fills you with incandescent rage, please explain in the comments why this upsets you so. Because I, I'd, I'd love to know. I'd, I'd like to get to the bottom of this. This is I, I never thought to I never thought to put this as a question to the viewers. Um, so to anybody watching, please explain. May, well, I, I, I don't know. May, may, maybe none of you are able to explain the strange phenomenon that um, this um, that white hot rage that seems to be displayed by some people over the fact that I don't get out of bed until half past nine or ten o'clock. Because, uh, well, why, sh why should I? I, I? I don't really feel the need to. It's nice and comfortable in my bed. I can stay there as long as I like. There is nobody telling me... I I'm my own boss. I can choose when I get myself out of bed. I don't have somebody standing over me with a whip telling me that I must be at this place by this time. Partly because I don't like said people standing over me and demanding that I be in said place at said time for said reasons that I don't necessarily care about. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I, I think this is... It, it, it could be an enlightening experience for us all if we can maybe find out why these people get so upset with this. And perhaps, you know, perhaps there can be some healing and some understanding. Maybe this is what we all need. Maybe we just need healing and understanding. We get to the bottom of all of these mysteries and, and yeah, uh, well, I, I, I don't really know. Um, it's, it's likely just one of those things that we'll never fully understand. An incomprehensible mystery. Now, we've gone all the way around. We've got 77,000, which is not quite enough for the two sea drills that I would like. We have been down to the ranch twice, and we have made use of the $1,487 per thousand litres twice. And I'm going to go into here.
And I'm going to go into C drills. And I'm going to go to that Stara right there. There's no options for it at all. I'm going to buy the first one for 39000 And we have $38,116 left. That is every single penny that we have to our name. So we'll get some more pennies. More pennies will be happening. It's just that we're going to have to wait until probably we finish this field now. Just let that one start cruising along there. That is the third time around the field. So the combine behind us... I'm going to jump back to that one in a second. And I'm going to change that one over to travelling up and down that side of the field whereas this one here is going to run up to that corner right there i'm going to stop this trailer right here and then i'm going to go back to you know this one here and i'm going to very quickly go like that and change that over like that so he's going to get to the end and he's going to turn around whereas the other one is going to keep going it's going to go along that top end this one here should stop should stop any time now there he is I knew he had it in him. He didn't want to stop, did he? He didn't want to stop. He, he, he wanted to keep going right there. He was going to cause some trouble for us. Fortunately, he has managed to cope with this. And I want to go and get our new sea drill, but I've still got this plowing to do. I'll go back to you here a second. I just want to wait for you to get around that corner, and then I can change the hired help bit. Uh, I was going to say, why has that got a little kink halfway down? I know why that's got a little kink halfway down. It's got a little kink halfway down because up there it missed a little bit when it went through. I guarantee it. Right, anyway, I want to put that one onto there. And hopefully it will just kind of put an extra. It won't. Sometimes what it will do is it will go out on a bit like that and then it will try to turn the corner part way through the little piece that's sticking out on the side of the field like it would get to here and then it would turn around and go back the other way but it doesn't look like it's going to try and do that on this one so it should be okay on there so let's go back down to you over here and i will do another pass up across the fields I don't know how many passes i'm going to be able to do here before i go to running back to our combines but the more i can do the better now it's seven o'clock so i I suppose we could... No, 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 I won't. I'm not going to start planting and then skip the night because we're going to have our fields... Uh, they're all going to be messed up. So we will wait until morning before we do our planting. And if the other two fields have got to be planted first before this one can be planted, we may be able to get this field finished before we uh, finish doing the others. I'd like to. It would be good, which is why I want to get another couple of passes done in here. Um... Our small Sammy Argon. Is that one able to pull one of the new Star uh, drills? If it is, then ideal. We don't need to change anything. If it's not, then uh, I would very seriously like to consider selling the Sammy Argon and buying another one of these Fiat tractors. I know it's cheap, and I know it's... Uh, well, it's, it's not that cheap, but I know it's... Um, it's really slow. It's, it's the biggest problem that I've got with this tractor is that it's painfully slow. Um, of all the tractors we've got, these are this is definitely the slowest one. And that's, that's the main reason that I don't particularly care for it. Like getting from one field to the other is, is a painstaking process. But if we're able to pull an extra one of those Stara drills with this tractor... Rather, uh, sorry, with well, with, with another tractor. Rather than having to rely on the fence to do it, because the fence, I kind of want like I want that one as an option for doing some other things as well, like running up and down the road to go and do the selling of the corn. Because that tractor does 50k on the road, this one only does 25k, and the Sammy Argon is 30 or 35, something like that. It's it's not very fast, so it's. Because it's so slow running on the road, um, you know, this this isn't a great option. But at the same time, if we can have a couple of tractors working in the field and keep the fence open as an option for other things, 
that is definitely going to be the like the better option out of, out of everything. We can just go and have a look at that tractor, can't we? Let's have a look in here. Go to our garage. It's 108 horsepower that we need. That is what is required. Sammy Argon is 105. Hmm. It might. It might do it. We do actually have enough money to go and buy the other sea drill right now if we wanted to. I could go and buy the other sea drill right now. I'm going to leave that one there because it is time to go and empty out these combines again. Just going to race down and grab the combine load down the other end. And then we've got the other combine that has literally just turned round. And is about to stop as well. We will load up from that one. So I'm going to do the back one. I have been asked why I keep insisting on doing the back trailer first. Because if you're driving along and you haven't done... You've only filled the back trailer. Uh, when you try to go around a corner, you are going to end up being jackknifed. And nasty, unpleasant things will happen to you. I am aware of this. I do know this. Uh, this is something that I take into consideration. But uh, also... The back trailer is the more difficult one, so I tend to do that one first whenever the conditions allow for it, so that should conditions change at any point, I can still rely on using the front trailer. Now, admittedly, moving up and down the field in straight lines, whether I use the back one or the front one isn't really going to make any difference. It's only really when you're going round and round in circles around the outside of the field that it's going to make any change whatsoever. Uh, I don't really mind about that. That doesn't really make any never mind in any way, shape or form. So we don't really need to worry too much about uh, whether the front trailer is uh, full or otherwise with it being a game. And it makes life, it, ju it just makes life a lot easier. So yes, in real life, we wouldn't want to be filling up the back trailer first because it would become horribly uneven and we wouldn't be able to get around any corners very easily we would just end up kind of flipping things upside down and and bad things would happen there would be bad things happening all around and we we don't want bad things to happen all around we would like nice pleasant things to happen and and stay being nice and pleasant but that's that's not going to happen right now right i'm going to whiz up over this side i'm going to let that combine come up there and then turn round and head on back down again um we're going to want to be hang on let's go and have a look down here i've got my plow working you are ready, you could go and do something, although I'm still thinking that we should be purchasing the new drills. Didn't I buy... I'm, I'm on a new recording session, it's probably become blatantly obvious by now. Um, so I'm not 100% sure where everything was. I'm going to let you... Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll turn you round and you're, going, you're doing fine. I'll unload what's now in this combine. And then what we're going to need to do, I think, is go and empty this trailer load. Just hoping that this will actually fill this one up completely. We're going to empty all of this lot out down in the sale point. Because we were selling it way down the bottom, weren't we? And then once I've done that, I can come back up and we'll have whatever is left to go into the trailers just for the final bit. We can go and sell that. That should give us enough money to buy the seed drill, if I remember correctly. We've already bought one. We've got that sitting at the market, and then we just need to buy one more. And I was going to test and see if it would work with our other tractor, with the Sammy Argon. Not sure if it will or not. Now, we're not going to fill this trailer up completely. Not on this run here. So what I might do is just now run down over this way that combine's turning around it's got 1500 liters on board which is going to take us up to 21,000 we only need another 500 liters after that if i look on here i have got the new drill down there at the shop so i just need to wait and buy one more which we'll be able to do after this and then i wanted to test it but i'm not going to do the planting until the morning i refuse to start doing the planting until the morning so that we can have um we're not going to have like the, the crop come in right, right at the end of the day or anything like that. I, I just think it's going to be a little bit better for us if we have it right at the very end of the day. Make life a little bit easier for us. 
We'll take out this right here. So we've got 1,000 left on board. 800. It's going to empty the tank out. Com no, it's not going to empty the tank out completely, I don't think. It did. It, it, emptied it, it emptied the tank completely, but only just. We, we, we literally just had one tiny little bit left there right at the very end. And we are now able to go full speed. So I'm just going to bring up the... Make it a little bit easier for us. I'm just going to bring the uh, cruise control all the way to maximum. Let's just make sure that going out the game and coming back in hasn't altered our price that we want. 1487 at the ranch. Ooh, I nearly made a mistake there. I very, very nearly made a mistake there. I thought for a minute that we were supposed to be going to the transport company, but no, we're going to the ranch to sell at 1487, the highest price we have ever seen. So I'm going to drive down this way. And we'll use the roads going this way instead. I did, for a minute, think we were going in the other direction. So we will run down over here. Those combines are very industrious. They're doing a grand job. They're probably going to get to the point where they're crashing into each other before we get back. But um, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. Um, getting this lot now. We sell this lot. It's not really going to make much difference to the grand scheme of things, except that we can buy that we've got two drills now. That is going to speed up the whole planting process. So the next thing that we're going to want to do after that is we're going to want to change our forage wagon so that we've got a bigger one. But bigger is not the reason that we want to change the forage wagon, uh, although I, well, I think it's bigger. Um, but that's not the reason that we want to change it. The, re the main reason that we want to change the forage wagon is because the other one that, that I'm looking at is faster. The current one that we've got does 15 kilometers an hour in the field, whereas the new one will be doing uh, 20k in the field. It's either 18 or 20k in the field. So it's a nice degree fa Yeah, well, I think it was 20, wasn't it? So we, we, we end up basically going... Um, from 15, it's a third faster again. We, we, we gain an extra 33% speed on the new one, which is going to make a huge difference to how quickly we can get through the fields and get all that straw picked up. We've got no reason to do anything with the straw at the moment other than just sell it, which is what we'll do. We don't make a vast sum of money from the straw, but we do make some money. So it's, it is worth taking the time to go and do it. Um, it is worth taking the time out to just get that little tiny bit there and uh, add that money into the coffers. So we've got, as we've got the drills, so long as the tractors can cope with both the drills and we don't have to have this tractor on the drills, that means this one is still able to do the road work that we may want it to go and do. Let's bring you up on here like that ready to sell and then start tipping that one start tipping that one sell both lots there so there's easily enough money now to go and buy the second drill that we want to get thirty two thousand dollars thirty one nine eight eight um yeah easily enough to get the second drill which I think we've relived enough glory days just for a moment. We're going to take a breather. We're going to have a little bite to eat. And then we can get back to it nice and refreshed and relive a few more glory days. There should be some names coming up right now that you can have a look at. It's names of people who are in the Great Book of Names, people who have supported this channel. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.